Okay. Starting off in the Chikalov, there's not a lot of forward basing positions. Maybe something like here, but you could absolutely get pinched. So uh, Chikalov would like to be in a forward position if it could, so you can throw planes, throw planes, throw planes. But right now, you're probably just going to have to stay open water. Or maybe go back there. And these planes are slow. Uh, this is incorrect. Okay, so you're traveling at 128 knots. There's no reason to do this. Um, with all of your squadrons, you don't have rockets on the Chikolov. You can burn boost and let it regen. You can do what I call cruise control. You're just going to accelerate up to maximum speed and then let it coast. Accelerate up to max speed and then let it coast. And you will either get all of your boost back and then go up to max speed and then all of your boost back, etc. In which case you're not losing any boost really to get across the map, you know, 20 knots faster. 15 to 20 knots faster. Or uh, you might use a bunch of boost, regen half of it. Move a bunch of boost, regen half of it. And slowly be working down the bar while you're gaining that additional 15 to 20 knots. Going at the giant, you know, the supersonic C speed of slow sucks for everybody involved. So uh, cruise control is good. It's it's good that you're not just burning through your boost because you're bored. You know, because some people do that where they're just like, they'll idle out and they'll just have their boost on. But definitely use the cruise control concept. Go faster, then let it coast. Go faster, then let it coast and regen. Dear God, this is slow. Okay, so this is going to be rough. Uh, Chikala bombers have extremely small amounts of health. <clears throat> you have six bombers, 8,000 total health. Actually, maybe 10,000 total health. They're going to get burned up. You've already lost one. You're about to lose a second. You probably end up losing two or maybe even three more. You drop with two or three bombs. And then the rest of the planes will die because there's everything here. Um, bombs are going to excel against isolated targets such as DDs. They can, well, they excel against destroyers because destroyers don't have enough, a lot of AA. They don't excel against isolated cruisers and battleships in the way that you might think because you will incur plane loss because the, uh, the dive bombers are going to get extremely close to the ship before they drop. So they're going to be in medium and short range AA for an extended period of time getting their ass kicked. Um, and cruisers and battleships, depending on how much AA they bring, they could single-handedly wipe out half the, the squadron before it gets a drop-off. So even if it's isolated, it could still suck. Um, <clears throat> this is a little bit more of a novelty piece. So you need to use either island cover for blocking AA, or you need to be against a fully isolated ship, preferably with poor AA, if you're going to be using the bombs to strike anything. Otherwise, you need to be using torps or skip bombs to engage at range. Going in on the Bismarck here was kind of like a, ooh, fuck it, I'll give this a go decision. It's going to cost you a bunch of planes. Not to say that's not recoverable. We can already see. So we lost one, but before I started talking about it, we lost three more. Probably gets the drop here with uh, two planes, and these other two will just get straight up mur murked. Two hits, and they're all dead. So six planes completely gone. Now you got information there, which is good. Uh, you got to see a DD, you got to see a Tulsa. Those weren't uh, spotted before. Um, and then again, we're going to be going hellaciously. Oh my god, this is horrendous slow. So now we're using some boost. That looks like a bit of cruise control. That looks like an impatience. So at least we're moving a little faster across the map. Which is really going to be the, the gig. Um, you did have bombs out. And there is a DD over there. What is that DD? So you see the scan over here? That's going to be a Yugamo. So that's, what, a minute and a half smoke? So we're already 20 seconds in. You could linger. If you strike the Iowa, you lose two to three planes just to strike the Iowa. Um, plane death, plane death, plane death. Yeah, so we lose three planes. You probably lose another two coming out. You might get one coming home. You do. So, we've already thrown, well, we've already lost 11 planes. Now, you've regen one, which is cool. Uh, maybe re even regen two, but that's a lot of investment, and that's also, 
that's breaking your tools it's breaking your toys um if you're gonna lean really hard on one squadron you're gonna lean really hard on one uh one option you have the ability to just burn that resource out and kill it no sorry it's early um if that yugamo comes out of smoke prime bomb target shitastic aa absolutely be all over this but you have to have bombs to do it um so i mean you're, you're changing off to something else which is good but just remember if you're going to lean really exhaustively on one tool you have the potential to break that tool and you're not you may not have it when you need it you know if you don't have a screwdriver to unscrew a screw you start getting real fucking creative <clears throat> Alright, so one thing that is nice about the uh, Russian torpedo planes is that they can maneuver similar to the FDR and that you can turn very sharply once you've uh, lined up the shot. I think that Chikolov is a little more uh, neutered in that sense in that it doesn't like moving as much as the, the tech tree carriers, but still it's an option that you have and you need to put this line probably out here because um, you always have to lead more than you think you do on the Russian uh, Russian torpedoes. Um, one thing that is worth remembering, the FDR has shit tons of health, so it can take the time to line up the shots and do the stuff that it needs to do, whereas the Russians cannot. They just don't have enough health here. So, you probably lose one plane before you get the drop, and I now say A is not a joke, but you're still at a, a decent range right now. You just remember you have to lead pretty sufficiently. There we go. That's probably okay. Nope, even that wasn't lead enough. He... You always have to lead more than you think you do with the Russian CV. It's it's awkward and off-putting, but it's something you got to practice. All stations, all stations, reporting the position of a strategic target. More, and that's gonna miss too. So, good news is somebody got a reset. Oh, cool, and he slowed down because he hard turned. That was good. The slowing down helped you actually get the hits. I'm just amazed this dude was like YOLOing up mid like yeah it's fine all right well good hits you gotta fire um back to the skip bombers cool okay so I do want to say um the central position has not worked out very well um, central position is ideally for supporting both flanks. Uh, so maybe you help over here, maybe you help over there. Obviously you got drawn into the middle with the knives and out, just yoloing it right the fuck up the center. But, one, it's nice to be about a grid square away from the front line, and two, because you are cripplingly slow outside of having this cool rocket booster interaction for the very few seconds that that happens, you need to be looking for where can you be positioning aggressively, now, right now, it's really awkward to position aggressively because there's just so much damn open water. You could try to come over here and sneak up on this island if you wanted to. Maybe that'll keep you safe. Possibly. Maybe. Realistically, you could have gone over here and tried to heavy push this flank. Just go nuts with it. Just everything you have into this. The Yugamo is isolated. Just fucking go after it. Bomb it, bomb it, bomb it etc and if you're over on this side you know with the island if the nice now rushes up mid i mean these guys might be having a shitty day but realistically you have to win at least one flank otherwise you're just being shoved back sometimes it works out in your favor because as your team gets grouped up they all shoot the same targets because that's what everybody sees but when you don't have any map control it gets really demoralizing um I don't know if you could base off this island, I think that's too close to the front, but you could certainly be here trying to just hard shove A until hopefully you win or break the flank and then start to wrap over, take island positions and be able to fling shit into the middle of the map. Um, being in this position, I think right now you're kind of learning how to play the thing, but uh, the long flight times are just brutal, man. Concentrate fire on the target. 
Got hits. Could be worth um, trying to go find fish out the Yugamo with bombers. Good news is the enemy was shoving through sea and they're bleeding health, so hopefully that flank ends up being one. There we go. Yeah, Yugamo is super close, so. Okay. Big hit. More bombs, more bombs, more bombs. So, against an isolated destroyer with bad AA, they're fantastic. Because you can constantly just be on top of this thing. Um, Problem solved, sir. So, definitely, like, if you had continued using bombs to the point where you really went down to just a single squad and that was it, or you just had a handful of planes, that could be really, uh, really problematic. But since you still had some, you could throw good two, two good shots into them. Force him into smoke, file it away. Smoke goes down in about 30 to 40 seconds, and realistically, you should still have been on the Yugamo. Um, because there's nothing to say that the Yugamo stays in the smoke screen. If he goes out the other side while he's trying to run, you're able to Enemy keep him lit destroyed. for your team to be able to do something. You need to stop running here. I need intelligence data. This is just putting you further and further out of the action. Uh, at this point, you probably look at the Tulsa, because you need these guys to get the hell in the game. Uh, working on the Iowa, working on the other Iowa, helps with the delay, helps with the resets, and that's certainly something that's important. But you need ships. Uh, these guys have been sitting back in the BC line for so long, they forgot what moving forward looks like. They're starting to learn. You know, they took the training wheels off their bike, and they're actually going to go forward. They're going to see if they can make it now. And trying to get rid of the Tulsa at least encourages them. Yay, good job. Come on. You can do it. Encourages them to get their ass in the cap so that you have a battleship up here and you have two battleships over here to work on the Iowa with you. Although there is a cyclone so they won't see them. I still think the Tulsa is the play. Um, and as stated before, when you're going to use dive bombers, if you do this against anything, anything that has decent non-shit AA, it's going to go poorly for you. Um, so going in on the Iowa, it's probably three, uh, another three planes dead to do minimal damage because the bombs against an Iowa are not going to be amazing. They do something and they didn't even pen. Tulsa's down. Great. So you don't have to worry about that. Nice that you didn't have to. <clears throat> At this point, honestly, instead of the skip bombs, I think you throw torps into the Iowa. <clears throat> to win okay <clears throat> consider your angles <clears throat> consider your attack lines there's two Iowas here and um, I may have gone through this replay before this feels like it was uh, something that I had done there's an Iowa over here there's an Iowa over here if you're coming in on this Iowa, which is the one that you struck before, you're riding through the AA of the other Iowa to get to it. So instead, if you just head it over this way, you strike into the Iowa, you make it happen. So I would prefer an outside strike to work on this one. I think I actually have seen this replay before. And if I have, then uh, you end up not even seeing that this one's there because he's off your screen right now. You end up going after the other one. Yeah. So the replay is a little overdone. This is not bad in the sense that you're putting your uh, you're putting your ship on the line to pull fire, which is useful. Ugh. And that's where broadside is a bitch. So, I'm okay with the bombs here. You uh, you had the rocket assisted oof, and frankly, at this point, it's just dangerous. The Iowa showing broadside to you is poor play. That just lets him... That He's letting you... He's helping you kill him. That's what he's doing. Three torps off. I mean, if he just kept going forward, bow into you, you're dead. <clears throat> he destroyed an enemy battleship. That was really goofy. 
Indrox probably kills the Lexington. More bombs getting murdered. Got a reset. Let's see. Lexington is dead. Iowa goes down, so he gets rescued. I do think I watched that one before. Um, 